Hello and welcome back. You're watching Best of the Bets. My name is Christina Nicolaides and regular guests back with me, Sam Diamond, editor of bestofthebets.com and our bookie extraordinaire, Thank that you. is Gareth Walker. We're looking at Sunday's FA Cup action and to start, Sam, you've been feeling a bit left out. I have. So big Sam, big promotion. What have we got? Yes, uh, we've joined forces with the very nice people at Heaven Bet. Um, and any Best of the Bets reader on the site this weekend, if they open an account with Heaven Bet via Best of the Bets, um, we will give them a free €50 Euro bet if their first bet loses. It's very generous. Yeah, and I should add that's in, in addition to the, uh, the concessions that we've got on, on Heaven Bet anyway. They can still qualify for the welcome bonus and, and everything else. Fantastic. Well worth taking up. It OK, is. looking at FA Cup fixtures for, uh, for Sunday, Brentford versus Chelsea. Yeah, Brentford at 11.4, uh, the draw 5.6 and Chelsea 1.25 to win a, uh, a London derby that we haven't seen for, for quite a number of years. Well, I think 1950 was the yeah. last time these two met. Uh, it, it, it's funny, this tie, Brentford would have killed for this tie any time in those, in those 63 years since. But... I just think it's come at completely the wrong time. Yeah. With them. They're so wrapped up in the League One title race. Since this tie was confirmed when they beat Southend in that replay, they've dropped five points at home. And this could be really costly. And I think if they can avoid injuries and avoid suspensions and avoid any unwanted attention on some of their star players like Harry Forrester, then they'll have done a grand job uh, and just hopefully use the extra money to just you know push them on to promotion. Yeah, some very shrewd judges uh, were, were quick off the, off the mark identifying Brentford as a team to be with this season and, and have got some very good... Uh, 25, 33, 40 type prices on, on Brentford winning the division. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they'll have been uh, been kicking the TV in anger the last couple of games, drop points, games they should have won. Um, there's no doubt that the uh, the attention of a couple of the players has been has been taken up by this by, by having Chelsea in town. Um, I think Chelsea will will I think class will tell here. Yeah, I mean poor poor show in the week. I mean that's the one question mark. If they weren't motivated for a semi final. Uh, with a trip to Wembley just one step away, how motivated will they be for the, mm. for the fourth round here? But I think that, in a way, that'll, that'll help. I think they'll be fired up, keen to show everyone that uh, Tuesday was, was a blip. So I, I'm looking, yeah, Chelsea, maybe 3-1 is 9.7, um, something like that. And a bet I'm really keen on um, is for, for Brentford to put up enough of a showing to at least score a goal. Both teams to score here is as big as 1.95. I like Brentford as well, uh, but I, I, I think this will be a bit of a mismatch. Yeah. Even with a Chelsea second string, they, they were a bit, they wobbled against QPR. Oh, with that I, well, yeah, but you know QPR for the time being are in you know two divisions higher. They might be the same division next season. Um, but I think it's a chance for some of these second strings, some of the out of form players. Uh, and Fernando Torres often is a bit of a flat trap bully. I think he could be a man to be with here first goal if he starts up front. Yeah, um, Torres is uh, 5.3 to score first. Um, and the scores that you were looking at, Christina, 5-1 Chelsea, 20 or, or maybe even 6-1, 25, would that tempt you in? <laughs> I like my big uh, I like my you big do, prices. it's a very good, uh, I, I like your style. Thank you. Leeds, Tottenham. Leeds 5.3, the draw 3.9 and Tottenham 1.6 for the trip up north. It's been a, a fall from grace for Leeds in this last decade, but in that time they've still showed that they're capable of ruffling the feathers of the big boys. Um, this season they've beaten Southampton and Everton in the League Cup and it's only 2010 that they knocked Manchester United out of the FA Cup at Old Trafford. That win at Old Trafford set up a fourth round tie with Tottenham, which is what they have now. Um, and they drew that day to take it to a replay to White Hart Lane. I think they, they could draw again. They've been very strong at home lately in the Championship. I think they've won the last six at Ellen Road in the league. Um, not so good away from home, so you feel if they are to cause a shock, they would have to do it here. But Tottenham have been strong lately, and I think it will cancel out. I think it will be all level. I'm with Sammy. I think, I think 3.9 for the draw um, is, is, is a good way of going here. Um, on another, another price, actually, on a slightly different tack, um, the, the cup game I remember at Leeds this season was the, the Chelsea game where they were ahead at half time. You're thinking, oh, brilliant, they could, they could get through to the semi finals, and then were absolutely annihilated in the second half. Um, a similar turnaround here, so Leeds to be ahead at half time, but Tottenham to win the game at full time is priced at 20. So that's a, a, certainly a bet that could be of interest to a lot. OK, we're going to look at Oldham uh, versus Liverpool. But before I ask you for what your predictions are, we're going to find out what Mike Holden has to say about this game. Boundary Park is notorious for being an, an awful ground. If the conditions aren't right, if it's a windy day, if it's cold, it, it's notorious for being a terrible place for a, a, you know, a flash Premier League side to visit. 
Uh, I was there myself when Manchester City were knocked out in, I'm not sure, 2005 maybe. Uh, Scott Vernon scored the only goal. It's a freezing cold day. It's Kevin Keegan City team. Um, and, you know, it's just one of those hiding to nothings. Um, I think Liverpool are in a position where they're a process orientated team. The, the way they play the game, it's all focused on. You know, the, the passing and the movement rather than the end goal at the moment. They're not kind of at that stage in the development under Brendan Rodgers. And I think that makes them vulnerable. It'll be interesting to see if he plays both um, Suarez and Sturridge. If that partnership doesn't play together, then I think there's a real, real chance for Oldham to cause a right shot. Right, so we've heard what Mike Holden has to say, our guru. Yeah, in interesting. The the, uh, the game he mentioned uh, in 2005 that City lost, Kevin Keegan was in charge of tactics, though, so I'm, I'm not so sure Liverpool <laughs> will be so, so badly off. Um, Oldham are priced at 14.2, uh, 6.1 the draw. Um, Liverpool, 1.2, very short. I'd love Mike to be right, I really would. Oldham have been in absolutely terrible form in the league, as Mike says. They've lost seven and drawn one of the last eight games. L pressure on Paul Dickov. Uh, Liverpool's second string as well have had plenty of practice this season I'd like to give Oldham a chance but I just can't see it I think Liverpool win this quite comfortably uh, maybe 3-1 is 9.6 um, I don't think it won't be a. Uh, they have turned over some, some poor teams with big score lines but it'd be a bit trickier going to Oldham they'll, they'll be happy just to get the job done and get out of there score lines like 3-1 3-0 are what I like and I think um, if you're going to look at another way of playing it Liverpool half time full time is 1.5 so that'd be the way I would go we're going to look at the European action. We're starting once again with the Bundesliga, but we're also starting with the offer. We are, yes, the German efficiency offer. If you back any team to win a game in the Bundesliga this, uh, this weekend, if the team is ahead at half-time but does not win the game, then you'll get your stake back. Uh, we're going to start looking at Hamburg versus Werder Bremen. Hamburg 2.5, the draw is 3.5, Werder Bremen 3. Nor Derby, it's a huge game uh, in Hamburg this weekend. Um, and this being the 50th season of the Bundesliga, Hamburg, the dinosaur as they're known, they're the only club to have been in the top flight all of that time. Yeah. They're looking to put on a show. And they, I think that a win against uh, Werder Bremen would really you know, be a be boost sweet, to their fans. It would it? be. They lost earlier in the season 2-0, but since then they've added you know, players like uh, Raphael van der Vaart, and he's really allowed his other uh, teammates to, to shine. So they've really picked up. Uh, Werder Bremen have, have just been in dreadful form lately. They were awful. Oh, it was so bad, it was, it was untrue. I went to the same fixture last season and, and Dortmund uh, scraped a 2-1 win in Bremen and then this season it was a yeah, one-sided we're, we're, game of watch. Dortmund were very lucky to beat them on the opening day of the season, but last week 5-0 at Werder Bremen and you know, it could have been a lot more. Uh, and they've had some heavy defeats lately. They lost 4-1 uh, to Eintracht Frankfurt mm. and I think 4-1 to Bayer Leverkusen as well. So. Not, not really a lot going for the away win here. No. Hamburg, 2.5. Looks good. Uh, they do welcome back uh, Marco Arnovich from suspension, which will be a boost. He's been a key player for them this season. Five goals. <laughs> but I, I like Hamburg here, and it's not often I've said that this season, but I think they have picked up. They play some great football at times, and it often hasn't been rewarded. So 2.5 about the Hamburg win. That's where I'm going. Yeah, um, I yeah, can't, can't disagree there. Uh, price uh, for a correct score, maybe 2-0 is 10.9. Um, yeah, I, I've, I can't put any faith in, in Bremen at the moment. We're going to move on to Stuttgart versus Bayern Munich. Stuttgart, 8.1 to win this, 4.8 for the draw. Munich, um, another odds-on shot away from home, 1.4. It's not going to happen, is it, for, uh, for Stuttgart? It's a big price about Stuttgart, but I, I don't know how you could oppose Bayern Munich this season. They've been just formidable. Uh, they started the second half of the season with a, a very workmanlike win against Greuther Firth just as they started the first and if they continue in the same vein they're going to be on for a record points haul uh, beating Borussia Dortmund's record. Formidable defence, they've conceded seven in the league all season. The opposition are needing more shots than anywhere else to, to score goals. Um, so yeah, Bayern Munich, for those that aren't keen on the 1.4 to win, um, alternate way of playing it is maybe to look at the handicap market where Bayern Munich minus one uh, is priced at 2.1 so you need Munich to win by two goals or more. Um, but I think that they're good enough to, to win to win comfortably, um, and I'd much rather take the the 2.1 uh, and running the risk of it, it them only winning by one um, and, and take Munich on the handicap there. 
I'd have to agree. Gareth points out how great they've been defensively, um, and especially away from home. Mm. They're unbeaten away from home this season. I think they've won eight and drawn one of their nine games, but they've kept seven clean sheets in those games as well, which is you know just astonishing. They can teach Manchester United a lesson or they two. They do, <laughs> and they have such a goal threat as well. They won six one um, against Stuttgart at Munich earlier in the season. I'm not saying it's going to be something similar, but I think it will be a comfortable win. Like Gareth, yeah. I'd go for three 0 and I'd like Bayern Munich on handicap. Three 0 which is nine point five, or maybe four 0 which is fifteen. Okay, we're going to move on to Serie A, Cagliari versus Palermo. Yes, the, the, fight at the, the, bottom. Uh, the derby della Isole, uh, Sardinia against Sicily, of course. It's um, not only uh, a rivalry that may not be one of the more traditional and well-known ones in Italy, but it has such um, relevance at the bottom of the table now that it's, it's really worth looking at. Uh, Palermo... A 19th, um, and I haven't won in seven. And mm -hmm. if it weren't for Siena's six point uh, deduction, they would actually be bottom. Cagliari, just outside the relegation zone, a 16th. win against yeah, a win against Genoa has eased their fears slightly, so they're three points um, ahead of the drop zone. Palermo, they, they travel really badly, they've only scored four, four times away, um, and they're yet to win away all season. Uh, I guess this is their, uh, their, 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 their game they have to travel uh, not too far to, so that would give, give encouragement. But um, I think it's going to be a, a home win in this relegation six-pointer. Palermo have really struggled for goals this season. I think uh, ever since Abel Hernandez tore his ACL, um, you know, there's been a lot of, of pressure on Fabrizio Micheli, and you know he he's struggled. They signed uh, Mario or Maro Formica from Blackburn this week, who I think is more suited to the Italian game. Mm. So whether that starts to create more chances for them, I don't know. Um, but as with a lot of derbies. I think this will be quite a tight affair. It was one all in the first game of the season. Would not be surprised to see something similar. Yeah. Um, Cagliari haven't kept a clean sheet for, I think, nine games, although they have been boosted by the fact that uh, their highly rated defender, David Story, is still at the club in the transfer window so far. A lot of attention from sort of Liverpool and Southampton, so he could well be off. But I, it's just one of those games that neither side can really afford to lose, and I don't think they will. I think it'll be a draw. OK. 1-1 one, one is 6.6 uh, .6 there, if you okay. want a correct score on that. We're going to move on to France, and we're not talking about Newcastle, we're talking about uh, Paris Saint-Germain versus Lille. Couldn't talk about Newcastle this week, no game for some reason, <laughs> baffled by that. Uh, PSG 1.5, uh, the draw 4.1. Uh, Lille 7.7. .7. PSG are back on the top um, after beating Bordeaux, yeah. so back to winning ways. A six clean sheet in a row as well, and full team for the season. So, you know, their defence has been phenomenal. It's sad to see Lille sort of languishing in mid-table this year, but it is very much a sort of season of consolidation. They had a good few years really challenging at the top. Yeah, which currently 10th. They've drawn their last three away from home. Uh, so it kind of shows that they're quite tough to beat on the road. But all of those have been against sides that are currently languishing in the bottom six. Draw, drawn a lot of games, nine out of 21, yeah. second highest only to Bordeaux in the league. This, yeah. is a, this is a huge test, a much, much bigger test. And of course, you'd expect them to raise their game at the Parc de France. But I don't think it's going to be anywhere near good enough. I, I expect PSG to sort of just be a comfortable 2 0 win here. 2 0, which is 7.3. PSG have, have had problems recently from having men sent off. So if they avoid any slip ups like that, I'd expect that they, they should be able to win comfortably. Lille, I mean, they lost 2 0 at home to Nice last week. It just seemed to sum up their, their campaign, really. Just huff and puff, couldn't get any uh, goals, and then were picked off at the other end. The handicap here again could be the play, yeah. rather than taking 1.5 for PSG to win the match. Um, give up a goal, so PSG on the handicap, minus one. If they win by two or more goals, you're getting a 2.4 for your money, uh, which is a, a more attractive player to me. OK, best bets for Sunday? Um, well, I would have to go for Cagliari at home to Palermo. I think uh, even money there is, is fair enough to, to tempt me in. Palermo being chronic away. I'm going to go with another home side. I'm going to go with Hamburg restoring uh, some, some pride uh, and winning the North Derby against uh, Werder Bremen. So Hamburg at 2.5. And yours? I'm going to go for Chelsea to beat Brentford 5-1. 5-1, 20. Your biggest, biggest prize yet, I think. Well, hopefully I'll win on this one. Now, hopefully you'll be wrong, actually. It'd be great to see uh, Brentford win, but um, well, I suspect that you're... Uh... It'd be great to see any upset in the, uh, in the, the FA Cup you, this you'd weekend. You'd imagine there's, there's Especially there's Fulham one. at Manchester United would be... <laughs> no. Sure, well, surely that, there'll that, be... Well, that, uh, isn't good. that definitely isn't going to happen. Sure, surely there'll be one somewhere along the line. Show that the, uh, there's still some romance left in the Cup, definitely. Thanks, gents.
for you to place your bets on this weekend's action. It's www.heavenbet.com. Follow us on Twitter at Best of the Bets. And if you would like to watch the show back, it's www.theplayerchannel.com forward slash sports. We'll see you back same time, same place next week. See you then.